In this second part of getting started with Unity and building to mobile devices, we'll concentrate on the iOS platform. First of all, you want to switch your project into iOS. So again, in the build settings, which is under file, build settings, uh, you'll pull up this screen, which you may be familiar with because you would have put scenes if you had a created PC builds um, in previous projects. Now, um, this is the same project that I had going for the Android in part one of this video. So we want to select the iOS and we will go switch platforms. Now, once again, you'll need to have a bundle ID. So over in the player settings, you need to set up this bundle ID and I'm just going to keep it with the one that we created before which is fine. Right, now, before we start to build and run this particular iOS app, you need to have the latest version of Xcode installed on your Mac. You should also make sure you've got the latest install and updates for your operating system as well. Um, this is usually one of the biggest issues people have when they're trying to build from Unity through Xcode onto their devices. Make sure your device is up to date. Xcode is the latest version of Xcode and you've updated your iOS um, to all the latest versions. With Unity, that's not that important. Um, I'm currently still using Unity 5.3, even though 5.4 is um, just out, but this process is the same for that as well. Right, so um, assuming you've got all of those things set up, the next thing you also need to have is an Apple developer account. Um, and that means you need to go to um, the Apple developer portal. So if you just uh, type that into Google, you'll find it. Now you can become a developer by logging in with your Apple ID and password. If you are an Apple user, if you have an iPhone or iPad, um, or a Mac, I'm assuming you've already got an Apple ID and password that you can log into this system with. And um, that will make you a developer and set up your developer profile. So just go through the steps that you find after you get to this portal. Now in Xcode itself, you need to register your Apple ID with it once you've done all this setting up in the developer. So if you run Xcode, um, let me just pull up my Xcode that I've got here. In Xcode, you want to go into Xcode Preferences. And in that Preferences, there's this account box. And in the account box, you're going to add a new account and type in your credentials for your Apple developer, which is your Apple ID. Um, and that will actually... Uh, assign you to this Xcode and give you, I guess, the privileges to actually build out to your devices. Um, now, along with this also, like if you're like me, you might be in several different development teams, um, in which case you can pick which one that you want or, or add the IDs for those as well. Uh, right, so that's having set up Xcode and also having uh, set up your development account. Right, so let's go back to Unity and actually try and build this out. At this point, I'd just like to mention that when you build out to iOS, it takes a lot longer than if you build out to Android. Now, when you're developing your game, you don't want to get into a cycle where you change, make a change, build it out to the device to test it, make a change, build it out to the device to test it, because it'll take you like, you know, all day to possibly get out five different revisions, which would be um, absolutely ridiculous. A lot of the testing and work you can do in um, the editor itself because most of the code, if possibly not all of it, will still respond uh, using the mouse as a finger touch um, emulator. So that's fine. Uh, if you must build out to a device, Android is just the fastest, uh, quickest way to go. So what I often do is I, if I have to build a device, will build to Android um, and test it on the Android with all the touch and all of the other sort of interfaces, GPS, um, tilt, accelerometers, all those sorts of things before I then go and do it on the iOS as well. Um, otherwise, you're just going to lose a lot of your day constantly building out. Um, and I'm not kidding. Sometimes I've actually taken maybe half an hour to build out to a device um, to iOS and um, that just it's just really a huge kink in uh, your pipeline 
Right, so um, let's continue and actually build this empty project out to the iOS. So we've got it here and I'm going to click on build and run. Now at this point, it's going to ask you what you want to call the build. Um, now I'm going to call it test Apple build, which I've already done before, but I'll just um, build over the top of the one that I have and it will warn me about that as well. And I'm just going to replace it. Okay, now it's going to start building and you'll get a whole bunch of messages like you did for the Android if you followed along with that one. And it gets to a point where it will try and open Xcode. And that's exactly what has just happened to me. And you'll see that in the console, I've got an error saying failed to launch Xcode. Um, now, this is nothing to panic about when you know how to fix it. If you're lucky, Xcode will open and it will ask you to then go through the process of um, building out to the phone. And it might do all that automatically for you. Um, but I seem to have this constant problem where Xcode just won't launch. And it could have something to do with the last project that was open or uh, who knows. Anyway, knowing how to fix this problem is a really um, good skill to have. Okay, so we've built out and we've built as far as putting the project into a directory. So Unity has kind of done its side of the work. We now need Xcode to do it. Now, um, if you go and find the folder in which you just saved that um, test build, so I can find it here. Here's my test Apple build that I've got um, created by Unity. And you can see all of the files that Unity created. They're all fine. What you want to look for is this Xcode proj file, and that's the one that can be opened up with Xcode, and we can do that manually. So by double clicking on that Xcode project file, Xcode will open up, and it'll give you a window that looks pretty much like this. Now make sure you have your device plugged into your computer at this point. Up the top, it should tell you which device it's going to try and build to and if it doesn't have your actual device iPhone or iPad up here you can select it by clicking where it says Unity iPhone and picking the device. I've currently only got my iPad plugged in so it just shows that. There's also a generic build but I want to put it on my iPad. Okay so I've done that. Um, something else that might happen is that you'll get some messages going on up here saying that there needs to be some processing that needs to occur to update stuff. Now I've got one error already here, actually warning, which says update um, to recommended settings, which if you just follow through and click on, you can go perform changes, um, select that, and then it will go through and do that for you and get rid of those warnings. Now this process of fixing up that warning might be instant like it was just then or it could be like it was earlier in my day and it actually took maybe 45 minutes to do that. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is when you start to develop with iOS, if you haven't done it before, be prepared. Um, be prepared to get a little frustrated um, and have plenty of time on your hands to work through it. All right, so this is our Unity file open. Essentially, we shouldn't even need to touch any of this because Unity should just build straight to the device. But, you know, things happen. Right, so we've got the um, iPad connected. We've got ready here. It's done whatever it had to do to check that device. Now, if you want to build out straight onto the iPad, you can press this little play button here. And that will then start the process of building. Now, you'll get a whole set of messages along this little bar at the top in Xcode. It will compile all of the files that it needs to and then it will bundle them up and push them out to your device and it will give you all the appropriate messages as it's doing that. Now, while this is happening, um, you might want to unlock your device and be ready to see your program open up. Um, depending on how big your project is, again, this could take quite a while and we're actually compiling and pushing out a completely empty project at the moment and it's taking its time. So it's finished compiling those files. Um, now I've sped up the video just before this while it was compiling. 
um, because it, it took like two, three minutes to actually go through and compile all those. Um, and now, finally, it's getting to this point where it's saying linking. Um, so that's where it's starting to link your library files and all of the stuff together. Once you get to this point where it says generating DSIM file, you can almost celebrate because that's kind of the final file that gets created and then pushed out to your attached device. Um, and just in a moment, we should get a message saying that it is building it out. And there we go. Preparing to install test game. And you should see on your iPad, after it says copying, in this case here, the icon will appear on your iPad and it will actually uh, open up your app and start running it. And it will say running test on um, your iPad in this message here. Okay, so that finalizes this first two getting started with Unity and mobile devices tutorials. As you saw, Android is far simpler than iOS to work with. Um, Android also, might I mention, beside it being quite fast to build stuff out, is that I think I mentioned this in the first video, is I've got a couple of Samsung devices that are, you know, they're getting on now, but in a quite quality hardware that has stood the test of time and I can still use it now with the um, current stuff that I'm building with Unity and fair enough they might not be up to chop processing wise if you've got a lot of stuff going on in your game but they are a good sort of starting point if you're learning and you can pick them up quite cheaply second hand on eBay or wherever. Now just as a final remark if you're needing more information on the steps that I've covered in these two starting videos, you'll find how to set up for iOS and how to set up for Android in the Unity documentation. If you do a search for Unity iOS or Unity Android setup in Google, it'll take you to these pages. You'll find them under platform specific in the actual manual itself. This will go through the steps that I've just gone through. Um, they're, they're helpful if you know what you're doing. They're a little bit brief, which is why I made the video to actually show you what, you, what to expect as you get through. Um, and so, well, good luck with your building. You'll need a lot of patience. But once you've figured out how to do all those steps and how everything sort of fits together, you'll be certainly off and running. And I'll talk to you in the next video.